Former Super Eagles defender Terry Bo West is more concerned about what will become of the current Super Eagles squad after the 2018 World Cup in Russia. A former Inter Milan and AC Milan player who was our guest on Channel Sports Sunday wants the country's football federation to look beyond the 2018 qualification and begin to make developmental plans for the team. Um, the problem with us is that we don't have a foundation in the sports ministry or a vision. After the World Cup, what next? What next? Yes, that's the question. Mm -hmm. What next? <laughs> so question. these young boys are going to go play with Tango. They qualify the ranking of our, 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 our flag as the Nigerian flag bearers. Now the, the ranking has gone up. Our value also has gone up. We don't, I, don't, I don't know if the people in the uh, sports ministry or sports association has a vision in our manifesto for the what next. We don't have that kind of um, structure on ground or men who have the capacity, who know the know-how to bring it down, how they can work with the ministry and also work with uh, 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 footballers across the globe uh, to make sure that in, after 2018, we still have a team. Mercedes driver Lewis Hamilton has won a fourth world championship of his illustrious Formula One career despite a difficult afternoon at the Mexico Grand Prix. An incident in the opening lap of the race saw Hamilton suffer a puncture and title rival Sebastian Vettel pick up damage to his front wing. And while the damage meant that Hamilton was left way back down the field, he picked up his fourth title when Vettel failed to make the top two. Hamilton's fourth title makes him the most decorated British driver in Formula One history, overtaking Jackie Stewart and draws him level with Vettel on the all-time list. Michael Schumacher remains three ahead with seven titles. World number two, Roger Federer has won his eighth Basel title, battling back to defeat Juan Martin Del Potro, 6-7, 6-4, 6-3, to clinch his ATP World Tour leading seventh title of the year. A 36-year-old also kept alive the battle for the year-end number one ATP ranking, pulling to within 1,460 points of Rafael Nadal with the final ATP World Tour Masters 1000 event of the year in Paris and the ATP finals still to go. Federer can capture a combined 2,500 points at those two events. The winning prize money sees him leapfrog Novak Djokovic to the top of the career earnings list in the history of men's tennis. Elsewhere, Denmark's Caroline Wojniacki earlier today beat America's Venus Williams to claim the biggest title of her career at the season-ending WTA finals in Singapore. Williams, at 37, the oldest woman to ever reach the final, lost 6-4, 6-4. After tight first set, number six seed Wojniacki stormed into a five-love lead in the second. Williams then won four straight games, but Wojniacki converted her second championship point to beat the American for the first time. And there you have her, ladies and gentlemen, your 2017 BMP Paribas WTA Final Singapore presented by SC Global singles champion Caroline Wozniacki. Somalia has sacked two of its top security officials over two blasts that occurred in Mogadishu on Saturday. Police Chief Abdi Hakim Dahir and the Director of National Intelligence Abdullahi Mohamed Sanbalush were both removed from office today. Police say they were able to lay hands on three militants in the attack, though the other two blew themselves up. The first blast happened around 5 p.m. when a suicide car bomb was rammed into a hotel. 
Nasser Hablo II, about 600 meters from the presidential palace. And a few minutes later, a car bomb exploded near the former parliament house nearby. The explosion destroyed the front of the three-story hotel and a next-door hotel was also damaged. This is where you would find many Somali officials because there is better security from attack. Emergency services showed up at the scene shortly after, whisking away the dead and wounded. From an initial 17, the death toll climbed to 29. Islamist group Al-Shabaab claimed responsibility for the attack. Some of the victims of the blast spoke of how they saw people dying around them. Although the attack happened around 5 p.m. on Saturday with a car bomb, a siege followed in which 12 police officers were killed. It only ended on Sunday morning. Saturday's attack comes just two weeks after nearly 400 people died in another series of attacks in the capital, said to be one of the deadliest Somalia has seen in recent times. Thousands of Spaniards are out on the streets of Barcelona today, showing support for a united country despite Catalonia declaring independence on Friday. The country has been gripped by a constitutional crisis since a referendum on October 1st, organized by Catalan leader Carles Puigdemont. The Catalan government said 90% of votes of the 34% of those who came out to vote were in favor of the region becoming independent. Spain has also voted to begin imposing direct rule and has dissolved the Catalan parliament, sacking its leaders. However, a government spokesperson says Puigdemont has the right to continue in politics despite his removal from office, as he can still take part in general elections expected to be called by Spain. In the United States, President Donald Trump today launched a tirade against his former rival in the presidential election, Hillary Clinton, at the Democratic Party over Russian collusion. The outburst comes amid reports of the first arrest in the Mueller investigation would be made this week, most likely on Monday. U.S. media say the first charges have been filed, but it's not clear what the charges are and whom they're targeting. Among his tweets early this morning was on the dossier on Trump by the Clinton campaign, the uranium to Russia deal and the guilt by the Democrats and Clinton. Critics on Twitter said he was trying to divert attention from the Russian investigation by complaining about the lack of focus on an opponent he defeated in the November election. U.S. intelligence agencies have already concluded that the Russian government sought to help Donald Trump win in the election, causing the Mueller investigation to look into any links between Russia and the Trump campaign. And the main news again, troops of the Nigerian army in the early hours of today repelled a night attack on Gunnery town in Yobe state, just as two female suicide bombers blew themselves up in separate attacks in Adamawa state. Also today, Borno State Governor Kashim Chatima allayed fears over a UN report claiming Boko Haram remain in control of some councils in the state, thereby denying aid workers access to some towns and villages. And thousands trooped out in Barcelona today to participate in Spain's unity rally and called for the jailing of the sacked Catalan leader, Carlos Puigdemont. That's the news of 10 tonight. Thanks for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.